This is the GIS News for Wednesday, 3rd September. I am Leslie Ann Johnson Cornwall. In the headlines, planned return of Condor Air expected to increase visitor arrivals during the second half of the year. Prime Minister says small island states need support to deal with high electricity prices and alliance of evangelical churches against casino gaming, but Tourism Minister says it will do good for the country. Those were the headlines. Details are next. The call for higher media standards has been answered. The yacht industry employs over 900 Grenadians in various areas of the industry. National television now responds to the need for investigative packages that probe deeper. State of Affairs tells you how cocoa is doing in Grenada, an industry that is fastly growing, booming to leaps and bounds. State of Affairs goes beyond the headlines to explain the story, the issues that affect our lives. The idea is to promote the consumption of our local produce. Probing, informative, educating and even entertaining. Last season you told us we raised the bar for broadcast journalism. Don't miss State of Affairs Season 2 on national television. With the imminent return of direct flights from Frankfurt, Germany later on this year, Grenada's Tourism and Civil Aviation Minister says she anticipates a further increase in the island's tourist arrival figures during the second half of 2014. Details from Janelle Hamlet. In an exclusive interview with the GIS on Monday, Minister for Tourism and Civil Aviation, the Honorable Alexandra Autry Noel, disclosed that the bookings for Condor Airlines' inaugural flight to Grenada have been going great. In fact, she said that the German airline reported to be so impressed with the figures that they have moved the date of the inaugural flight from the third week in November to the first week in November. What I want to say about Condor is that they have been so impressed with their figures that they've actually added flights. So they were supposed to start towards the end of November, and I believe their first flight is now going to be on the 1st of November. So their inaugural flight coming back to Grenada is going to be on the 1st of November. Since we enter in business with Condor back in the month of March, the tourism minister said that the Grenada Tourism Authority has been working aggressively to market and promote the initial flight to the German public and the German travel agents. They're so pleased with what they're seeing. So the, the, um, the interest from Germany has been tremendous. Uh, the GTA has been instrumental in ensuring that we're running ads and we're, you know, engaging the travel trade over there so that they know Grenada's back on the agenda for sale in, in, in Germany. And uh, so we're really excited. So we anticipate that our second quarter um, tourism figures will, will be just as, as glowing as the first half. By early July, reports reaching the minister's office were that the Condor airline flight was already 80% sold out for the month of November. We're very encouraged and I think that our new, our new brand has had a lot to do with it. We've repositioned ourselves and put ourselves out there as a uh, you know, responsible destination. We're trying to balance preservation and development. Um, and I think what's happened, which is, which is really wonderful, is a lot of people are understanding where we want to go and um, we're all speaking the same language. Statistics show that there has been a resurgence of interest in Grenada by the German market. This year alone has registered an almost 100% increase in not only the number of German visitors to the island, but the length of time spent for the period of January to June as compared to the same period in 2013. For GIS News, I am Janelle Hamlet reporting. Thank you, Janelle.
Given the economic impact of climate change on the economies of small island states, the debate on the graduation of least developed countries cannot continue. That's according to Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell. He was addressing an international conference of small island developing states in Samoa in the Pacific. Dr. Mitchell pointed to a recent country assessment strategy by the World Bank for Eastern Caribbean Islands, which identified two critical factors for high indebtedness, extreme weather events and oil price volatility. He said given the impact of climate change on the economies, the need for concessionary funding is evident. We need to have a predictable process in place. We call for a pragmatic approach to the World Bank Small States Forum with a five-year plan so that we can show progress from year to year, particularly on the issue of concessionary financing and the issue of growth. Looking forward, let us be frank. What we need is growth, wealth creation, and shared prosperity. The World Bank Country Assistance Strategy for the Eastern Caribbean also mentioned fossil fuel prices as a contributor to indebtedness and a drag on our economies. We cannot continue to grow if we are spending double-digit percentages on our import bill on fossil fuels. And given the high electricity prices in our islands, what better place to implement renewable energies than the island states? The renewable energy market is estimated to be about $16 trillion. In small island developing states, the price of electricity is between 25 cents per kilowatt hour and can run as high as two US dollars per kilowatt hour. In Grenada, the price is 45 cents per kilowatt hour. Dr. Mitchell says we need as much support as possible to deal with high electricity prices. Implementing renewable energies in, in my country is an absolute essential for the future development of our economy. To get to this stage, we are grateful for the support of Germany, the SITSDOC, ARENA, the World Bank, the GEF, OPIC, the Carbon War Room, and the Rocky Mountain Institute. It's important, therefore, to point to this announcement that I wish to give about the seriousness of my administration on energy that the United States recently has selected Grenada as a pilot site for the renewable energy initiative in the region. Grenada is very encouraged by the strides made under the administ Obama administration to scale up renewables. And I would like to express my sincere thanks and appreciation to the government and people of the United States for choosing to work so closely with Grenada. The Alliance of Evangelical Churches says it is strongly opposed to casino gaming in the country. The Alliance has raised its concerns following the recent passage in both Houses of Parliament of the Casino Gaming Bill 2014. The passage allows government to grant a license to hotels to have a casino. During a news conference on Tuesday, President Reverend John Lewis said they consider it an immoral act that can be destructive to the economy. It is immoral because it preys on the weak and the vulnerable. It preys on the weak, including teenagers, children, and those who are not rational, who aren't the smartest and the brightest, and who have the least. Some of the effects are as follows. One, exploitation of the poor, increased societal problems. Three, increased suicide, increased gambling addictions, increased family problems, and increased crime rate. The Evangelical Alliance of Churches of Grenada believes the introduction of casino gambling in Grenada or the extension of existing forms of gambling would be morally harmful, economically destructive, societally intolerable, as a serious disfigurement of national heritage. The Alliance's public relations officer, Pastor Alfred Hosford, believes there is the potential for an increase in crime. God expects man to labor. By the sweat of their brow you shall eat bread, not by sweating at the wheel in the gambling den or in the casino. Gambling also devalues the dignity of man made in the image of God. God works 
and so should men. Mm -hmm. God works to promote the advancement of his purpose, mm -hmm. and so should men. Gambling in no way expresses the dignity of a, a man, neither does it express the image of God in men. Clause 19 of the Act states that no person under the age of 18 or who is a citizen can take part in the activities of any casino. If they violate these terms, they are deemed to have committed an offense and can be fined $100,000 on summary conviction. Fifteen countries in the Caribbean are currently involved in gaming and 12 casinos in the region have been nominated for the World Travel Awards. Meanwhile, Grenada's Tourism Minister, the Honorable Alexandra Otway Noel, is convinced passing the casino gaming bill will do good for this country. In a one-on-one -on -one with GIS, the minister said she's aware of the opposing views, but still believes if given the chance, people will realize the benefits of having casino gaming here. We're aware that there, there are some who have questions and so on, and we're working through it. But um, it's a positive thing. Um, the Caribbean has so many destinations that already have casinos, and they're successful. And, you know, for it, the, this, the whole idea is that it's for our visitors to come and enjoy, and it's a form of entertainment. So, you know, we, we think that you, just the same way people will go out and spend $100 in restaurants and bars or going dancing or whatever, people find gambling as a source of entertainment. And so, you know, we want to ensure that it's, an, it's something that we have on offer. Minister Otway Noel says many islands in the Caribbean have casino gaming, and it's an excellent source of revenue. What um, our government perceives is that it is going to allow us not only to, to take the next step towards having a complete tourism product, but also, you know, the taxes and revenues that come from gaming will help our social structure as well, help us to meet the needs of our people. So it's a win-win situation. The tourism minister adds that having the casino gaming law can attract high-end quality investors to the country. We want to have a world-class tourism product, and this is what we've been saying from the beginning. And so, you know, it's not about little um, casinos on every corner. What we have said is that we want a 300-room hotel minimum, and then in addition to that, then you can apply for a casino license. So, you know, it would be a complete package. So we're looking for high-end um, quality hotels. And I always say, you know, quality doesn't always have to mean expensive because we have a lot of little hotels in Grenada that are providing a quality product, and they're not that expensive. Quality is about customer service and, you know, making sure that your guests are happy. It doesn't, that doesn't need to be expensive. We definitely want to cater to the top of the line clientele because they travel year round and they also spend a significant amount of you know, more money and they also tend to stay longer. And Grenada is off the beaten path and so we want to ensure that we have something for everyone. You know, a world class tourism product should cater to everyone. The minister told the government information service that everyone stands to benefit. The job opportunities that come from casinos, you need accountants, you need, you need waitresses, you need restaurant staff, you need, you know, there's so many things that come along with a casino. And, um, you know, the, the, the doorman at one of the largest casinos in Las Vegas makes $150,000 a year. You know, so, I mean, there's opportunities if it's done properly. I mean, we can't compete with Las Vegas and we have no intention of doing that because we're going for quality rather than quantity. But the point is, is that there's opportunities once we're catering to the right crowd. And um, we have a very small population in Grenada, relatively speaking. And, uh, you know, our small economy is, is easily impacted. You're watching the GIS News. We'll be back after this break. Shaking, shaking, dance the so we have made rock, 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 and the roof had gone. Man, I was so scared, I nearly wet myself. Only those who have lived it can truly understand the devastating fury of a hurricane's wind. The house across the road just get up and roll over. Hurricane force wind, it's a hazard. Hazards, take control, reduce your loss. You can hurricane proof your home. 
For example, make your roof more